optics now it's not only restricted to your 11th standard it also consists of some prerequisites from your lower standards so that is one of the part which we have started in last lecture it was about spherical mirrors and the common terms which were associated with it so the part you have already studied we have already gone through this particular part now moving forward another thing which you have already studied regarding mirrors to be precise spherical mirrors is a part about ray diagrams now i'm hoping no matter where you have already completed your schooling let it be cbsc icsc or state board you might have drawn these diagrams so i am hoping that you have drawn it so we are not going to draw it we are just going to go through those concepts so regarding ray diagrams oh, of course we don't have ray diagrams right now just an idea about that which we need to understand so this is a table which you have from your textbook the actual table from your previous schools as uh, previous levels as in from 9th or 10th this is the table which you had so both of them they are same both of them they give you four columns regarding position of object image the nature of image the size of image the only thing which you can see are the titles which are different but the concept remains same so if i consider here the position of object u is equal to f so what that u is equal to f it represents u bole to object so u is equal to f it represents that the position of object is at focus so this is how we can correlate so if we have u is equal to f as an object is at focus the position of image v is equal to infinity matlab kya the position of image is at infinity whether it is real or virtual you can see it is inverted and real that's why we have r over here and what is the size you can see it is very large which in new terms can be given as m which is magnification we are going to see what it is which is infinity so that's how we can correlate so if we refer to this at center of curvature when we consider it is at center of curvature when we consider it is at center of curvature center of curvature is basically 2f so we can consider this is the point where object is at center of curvature again where you get an image at center of curvature itself again he is equal to 2f so in this way you can correlate this particular table with your new table now this table which we are considering this is from your 11th standard textbook and this is what you had in your 9th standard so you can correlate these two and you can understand that so you have already drawn these diagrams so this is the diagram which we have this uh, i hope you will be able to understand this object is between c and f so it is between the center of curvature and focus this third diagram so what we get we get an image which is beyond center of curvature the nature is real it is inverted you can see it is below principal axis and you can see it is magnified it means the image is bigger than that of object similarly if we consider another ray diagram like this so in this case of in this particular ray diagram what is the position of object object is between f and p so when it is between f and p this is the diagram which we are talking about u is less than f so this is the object we know where the image is formed this is the image which is formed which is behind the mirror so if it is behind the mirror we know it is virtual so if we know that if it is virtual you can compare the sizes object and image you can check that the image is bigger than that of object that's why we know m is greater when the magnification is greater greater than what greater than obviously greater than 1 and v v is object distance or oh, sorry v is image distance which is greater than object distance you can check over here this is the object distance which we have this part it's definitely less than that of image distance 
So you can refer to the table. I suggest you go through all the ray diagrams which you have already drawn. If you have not drawn the ray diagrams, please do let me know so that I can give you the ray diagrams for uh, at least an image of a ray diagram in the next lecture. So you can at least go through them to have some idea of how to draw them or how they are drawn. Okay. Now. Shreya, she is telling me not drawn. I, Shreya, she am not drawn in your school. Shreya, you are from HSC, as in State Board or CBSC. Oh, you have drawn in school, na? So that's what. Yeah, school me draw kiya hai, na? That is what I wanted. I am just going, I am just telling you to go through them just to have some idea of how to draw it. That's it. So just go through them a quick glance at 10 minutes that will suffice. You don't have to go into details. So this is the part which you have already done regarding the ray diagrams. You already are familiar with the rules of ray diagrams. That's why I did not go into too much details about it. What we are interested in is in the next part, which is about mirror formula. Now, again, you have already solved numericals based on this. You have already studied it thoroughly. You have already, you have already uh, are familiar with the concept. So we can directly get into it. This is the mirror formula, which we have one upon V plus one upon U is equal to one upon F. I hope you know all the concepts as in, I hope you know all the variables, what they are called. U is called as object distance, which is the distance of the object from the mirror. Let it be any mirror, maybe convex, maybe concave, doesn't matter. V is the image distance, the distance of image from that particular mirror. Again, it can be any mirror. F is the focal length depending on the mirror again the sign conventions which we will get into in the next we have to consider them another important formula for us which we will be using even in 11th standard is about magnification which gives you h2 upon h1 is equal to minus v upon u where H2 stands for height of image and H1 stands for height of object. Height bolo, size bolo, one of the same thing. Size of image is same as that height of image. And V and U, which we have over here, V and U is same as that of before. So this V and U, same as this V and U. Another thing you might not have directly studied, but you might have understood is about the power. You have studied that for lenses, same a mirror will also have a power. We can call it as a focal power. So it's basically the converging or diverging ability of that particular device. Let it be a lens, let it be a mirror. That is what we call it as a power. More is the power, more is converging or diverging. The formula again, we know P is equal to one upon F. This M stands for that focal length is taken in meter. So one upon focal length, it gives us the power and the unit of that focal power is given as diopter, which is inverse of meter. So what exactly is one diopter? It is one upon one meter. So this part again, you have already gone through. So just to have a revision, because we will be using this formula again later on in some derivations, we are covering it. Okay. So again, before moving forward, do we have any doubts regarding this? Okay, good. This is just a prerequisite. So that's why I'm covering it. Now let's move forward again some revision part which you have already studied 
we are not going to invest too much time but it might be helpful so i might ask you to at least note it down or take a screenshot and note down later cartesian sign conventions these are very important even though it might not be taught to you in 11th standard these are very 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 important i can't stress it enough that's why i'm covering it even though you have studied in lower standard even if you feel like they are very easy this is the part which we focus on which is very important so i am hoping you are already familiar with them all in all there are six points or five points again depending on how many points you are considering we know that object is always or uh, it should be kept on the left side of the mirror we know the distances we measure from pole of the mirror if we go to the left side the values are negative if we go to the right side the values are positive if we go upward the values are positive if we go downward the values are negative the last point which is very important is about this a focal length the focal length for concave is always negative and for convex it is always positive so these are the sign conventions which you have already studied we are going to use them while solving numericals so this is another table which i found out might be useful to you so this actually summarizes everything which we have so this is not a dash it is negative and positive so for concave mirror you will always be negative for convex mirror you will always be negative this is not dash this is negative chahiye to negative yahan pe likh leta hu main so if the real image is formed v ka sign should be negative if it is virtual then it will be positive focal length is always negative for concave positive for convex same goes for r which is radius of curvature which is negative for concave and positive for convex height of object as you can see it is always positive no matter what mirror we are using height of image if it is real image it is negative and convex may no real image obviously it's always virtual and if it is virtual image you can see it is positive so this table it helps in sign convention generally i have a habit of giving this table when i am teaching not only in 11th standard but 9th standard itself but if you have not used it then or if you have not used it then at least you can use it now whenever you will have any problem so i hope you can make a note of this table not now you'll get a recording of this so that time you can take it you can take a screenshot of it <coughs> and then later on you can make a note of it so i hope this is helpful to you any doubts regarding sign conventions okay good now what we are going to do we are going to solve a numerical okay rather you are going to solve a numerical i'll keep a numerical over here i'll give you a couple of minutes to try solving it you can give me an answer in the message itself again no need to tell you send me an answer privately in a chat and i'll give you whether you are correct or wrong okay so go through the numerical read it very carefully it is based on the same mirror formula which you have utilized previously in your school days the same mirror formula which we have just revised the same thing which you have to use i hope you will be able to solve it okay 
इज अगेन इज इट विजिबल पूरा का पूरा न्यूमेरिकल प्रॉपरली दिख रहा है कोई प्रॉब्लम है इसमें ओके चलो स्टार्ट कर रहे हैं आई विल गिव यू टू मिनट्स टू ट्राई ओके इट्स फाइव फिफ्टी फाइव इन माई क्लॉक आई गिव यू टिल फाइव फिफ्टी सेवन ओके ट्राई करो ओके आराध्य यस आराध्य इज करेक्ट श्रेयस नो ओके लेट्स क्विकली अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज आस्ट ओके सो व्हाट दे गिविंग यू दैट देर इज अ थिन पेंसिल ऑफ लेंथ ट्वेंटी सेंटीमीटर व्हिच इज केप्ट अलोंग द प्रिंसिपल एक्सिस ऑफ अ कॉन्केव मिरर दे आर गिविंग यू द कर्वेचर व्हिच इज थर्टी सेंटीमीटर the nearest end of the pencil is 20 cm from the pole of the mirror so what will be the size of the image 
the first thing which we need to do is to find the focal length so the radius is given as 30 the focal length will be half of it the shreya shreya is correct so focal length it comes out to be minus 15 why minus 15 because it is a concave mirror next we are going to use a formula 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon v plus 1 upon u now <clears throat> the nearest end of the pencil that is the part which we are going to consider as an object so the nearest end now the pencil is not standing it is lying down along with the principal axis right so i'll try to draw a diagram over here assume karo this is the principal axis this is the mirror which we have so the generally what we are habitual we are habitual with the object which is kept in this manner but now the object is not kept in this manner the pencil is kept along the principal axis so the pencil is kept like this so this is how the pencil is kept so assume karo this is the pencil from this point till this point so what we need we need to find find out how much is this length so how to find it out let's see how to find that out so we know this distance they are giving you how much is this distance the nearest end so this is the nearest end which we have so this they are giving you as 20 so we can consider the object for nearest end which is 20 again minus 20 why minus because object is always to the left sign conventions so we can substitute and we can find out value over here the image which is formed at this point considering it as v1 and we have to find out again how much is v2 so that we can find out how much is that length <coughs> so now moving forward what do we get we'll get again substituting the values we get f ke jagah pe minus 15 instead of v we substitute as v1 instead of u we substitute as minus 20 now by doing calculation i hope you are able to do the calculation so we are not going to details of calculation you take lcm you do cross multiplication it's your choice changing the sides so on and so forth we get Value of v one to be minus sixty. We will get LCM at sixty. Changing the sides, going for cross multiplication, going for LCM, you get v one as minus sixty. So <clears throat> now let's find out where the farthest end is. Now the nearest end is twenty centimeter. and the length of pencil is 20 cm so this is 20 plus this length of that pencil is 20 so now what we will have the farthest end will be at 40 that is the part which is given now the nearest end is 20 the pencil is 20 cm long so the farthest end which is our second object which we are considering is going to be 40 cm so for the 40 cm which we consider a second object which is u2 again we use the same formula <clears throat> and find <clears throat> and find the image distance for that so let's again apply this particular formula for the image distance v2 we substitute the values now we have object distance which is minus 40 again minus because of sign convention <clears throat> we get v2 as minus 24 so for the first point which is nearest point we got v as minus 60 for second point we got it as minus 24 so image ka length kitna hoga simple 60 minus 24 which is the difference of it so which comes out to be 36 cm 
Now here we don't have to consider sign conventions. Once again, why we have minus sign over here? It is just because it is a real image. <coughs> we are interested in this distance only, not the sign. That's why we are not considering minus 60 over here. Okay. Or if you want, again, you'll get the same answer minus 60 minus of minus 24. Again, anyway, you're going to get it 36, which is minus 36. But we are again interested in only the value, not the sign. So the length of the image, it comes out to be minus 36 or 36 centimeter. Any doubts till this point? Bolari, yes or no? Okay, good. <clears throat> now, let's move forward. Okay. Now the next part which we are going to see, which you have not studied, which is from your 11th standard, is about aberrations. Okay. Or it's also called as defects, which is formed in an image. <clears throat> okay. Now, for that, we need to understand some prerequisites, okay? Some basics, some assumptions which we do generally. <clears throat> so, when we consider the image formation, maybe by mirrors, maybe by lens, we assume some things, or we assumed in lower standards some things, okay? What are the assumptions which we have done? First one is about object and images that there situated very close to the principal axis. <clears throat> no, you, you know what principal axis is? They are very close to the principal axis which we have. That is one assumption which we have done. Second, the diverging or converging of the lenses or mirrors or rays, the confined to a cone of very small angle. Means the rays, if they are diverging or if they are converging, they are converging and they are diverging in very small angles. Means if you have principal axis like this, the ray cannot diverge like this. That is what we have assumed. This is not how a ray can go. It can only diverge like this, which is in small direction. Or other way around, if you are considering converging, the ray cannot converge like this. That is what we are assuming. This is not possible. Ray can only converge in small angles. So this is only how it can converge. That is what we have assumed. So it can only diverge or it can only converge in a small angle. <coughs> Third one, if we have a parallel beam of rays in case of object of infinity, we consider that they're paraxial. Now I'm against you're familiar with this term means they're parallel and very close to the principal axis so <clears throat> these are the assumptions which we have considered when we consider image formation by mirrors or lenses now obviously when we consider practically speaking really speaking in reality these are this is not how the image is formed so these assumptions they who don't hold true in practical image formation. So in practical image formation, what we get are the distorted images, blurred images or defective images. And those defects <coughs> are called as aberrations. I mean, why those defects happen, how those defect happens, that is the part which we are going to consider in the next slide, which we have as spherical aberrations. Now, ideally, <clears throat> how the image should be formed and practically how the image is formed, that is what it is given. Now, when we consider the image which is formed in case of a concave mirror, this is how we consider the uh, image is formed, ideally. You can see it's very clear image. 
<clears throat> since they are at same position we can consider this to be a center of curvature so this is how the image is formed <clears throat> aberration means defect some problem okay the meaning of word aberration means defect a bit defect kyu hai because of the spherical nature that's why we call it as spherical aberration but in reality the image you can see it is not connected it is blurred it's not as clear as that of object so obviously this is the defected image we call it call it as the aberrated image or due to spherical mirror that's why we call it as a spherical aberration now <clears throat> what happens in this case generally we i told you we assume that the rays they make very small angles with the mirror so maybe while incident while being reflected they are assumed to have very small angles but practically that doesn't happen practically they do make very large angles while converging or diverging so due to those large angles they converge to the point other than the image point matlab kya next diagram mein samjhega tum logo okay so if we are considering that a ray which goes something like this it is supposed to converge over here and another ray if let's say it goes something like this it will converge over here and we will get an image over here clear image but are these only the rays which we will be going will be going making small angles no there will be another ray which goes something like this and it's going to go something like this there will be another ray which goes something like this and which gets reflected like this so this is another point which we are getting due to the large reflections or large angles and you can see these two points are different so they converge to a point other than image point and this is our image point we can consider this as ip right and the point here is what we have as op other point okay that is what this means so the result we we get is a blurred image and this is what we call it as a spherical aberration or a spherical defect now how to correct that defect there are lots and lots of different ways to correct the defect one of them it is given over here you simply close this part of that particular mirror okay so only the part of the mirror is used so that upper reflection hoga hi nahi sirf itne part mein hi light jayega aur itne part mein hi reflection milega and this shape what we are getting is the shape which is used over here so this is the shape which we are left off with so the most common way of getting rid of aberration is to go for the parabolic shape i hope you know the concept of parabola bolo re yes or no parabola kya hai pata hai nahi hai बारह बोला नहीं पता मैथ्स में पढ़ा नहीं अभी तुम लोगों ने ओके ओके पैरा बोला इज अ शेप कॉन्वेक्स शेप सॉरी कॉन्केव शेप मतलब आई विल ड्रॉ इट आई विल ट्राई आई कैन कंसिडर दिस एज कॉन्केव and at the same time this is also concave right so this is first one which we have concave shape this is second one which we have concave shape to ye jo second wala shape hai na which is just concave just shy of being a straight surface that is what we call it as a parabolic shape to give you the best example give you a perfect example of a parabolic shape 
I hope all of you have some or other type of dish TVs at your houses. Maybe Tata Sky, Airtel, whatever it may be. So the shape of that antenna, if you have seen, that is a shape which is a concave shape, but it is just shy of being a straight surface, a plane surface. So that surface is what we call it as a parabolic shape or a parabola. Clear? So you can see over here, it's also a parabolic shape. I do have another image with me, I'm guessing. So that is what we call it as a parabola. Any doubts in this? Okay, aberration samjha hai, koi problem hai spherical aberration mein. Good. Just go through your textbook. The diagrams in the textbook, they are not that clear. That's why I added some other diagrams as well. I do have another diagram for spherical aberration. Let me just clear this doodling which I have done. This is the diagram which we have. Okay, what happens in a spherical aberration? You get many focal points. That's the only thing which we have. Okay, due to the shape, you can see here the angle which is done is different whereas in this case the angle which is done is different so obviously the converging points will be different the rays are going to converge at two different points this is one and this is another point okay so ideally what should happen in a parabolic shape this is what should happen okay the rays they should converge at a proper point only one single point only one focal point okay now, obviously, this is not up to the mark diagram. This is just to give you an idea about what happens in a parabolic shape and what happens in a spherical shape. Okay. So, in case of spherical shape, you'll get this spherical aberration. So, to reduce those aberration, to reduce those defects, we can have a concave shape, which is called as a parabolic concave shape. Now, what type of aberrations generally we get in case of a spherical aberration? That is the part which we have. Okay, deliberately again, I have used this terminologies and the diagram. One we have as longitudinal aberration. Second, we have trans transverse aberration, and third one we have circle of least confusion. Okay, matlab kya? Again. To give you some idea, ideally what we happen, we have a concave shape over here. We have one ray coming over, it gets reflected. We have another ray coming over, it gets reflected. And we get this particular point. This is what we are habitual to. But practically, does it happen? No, it doesn't happen. Practically, due to this shape, if I'm considering something like this, now the ray is going to come over here as well and it's going to reflect like this. A ray is going to incident over here as well and it's going to reflect like this. Giving us another point of intersection which is over here. Giving rise to a spherical aberration. But at the end this is how the rays are going to intersect. Ideally, they should intersect at this point only. Sab log ek jagah pe. Sirf pe intersect honi chahiye. But you can see they intersect at so many different points. Yaha pe bhi intersect ho rahe, yaha pe bhi intersect ho rahe, giving us blurred image rather than get, get, getting us a very sharp image. So based on these intersections, we get different different types of aberration. मतलब आइडियली यहां पे होना चाहिए था बट यहां पे भी हो रहा है यहां पे भी हो रहा है तो ये जो डिस्टेंस है बिटवीन द एक्चुअल एंड एडिशनल इंटरसेक्शन इज व्हाट वी कॉल इट एज अ लॉन्जिट्यूडिनल स्फेरिकल एब्रेशन ओके सेकंडली व्हाट हैपेंस यहां पे सिर्फ इंटरसेक्ट होना चाहिए था देयर शुड नॉट बी एनी अदर रे एनीवेयर ऑन दैट स्क्रीन अदर देन दिस पॉइंट बट यू कैन सी वी हैव रेज व्हिच आर getting over here we have rays which are getting over here 
at the same time we have rays which are incident on this part of the screen or this part of the screen so this distance between the ideal and actual this part or this part for that matter this is what we call it as a transverse aberration now what do we mean light is incidenting matlab yahan pe kuch image form ho raha hai na but ye nahi chahiye hum logo ko hum logo ko sirf ye chahiye so ye jo extra part aaya hai this vertical one is what we call it as a transverse one and this horizontal one which is the extra part which we are getting is the longitudinal one okay any any doubts in this i have not yet explained you circle of least confusion but any doubts in these two bolo re yes or no agar ye samjhe to main aage ka sam explain karta hu इमेज कैसा मिल रहा है एक सर्क्यूलर इमेज मिल रहा है why we are getting this circular image because we have additional rays like this which are being incident on the screen which should not have been so we get a circle like this rather than getting a point to ye jo distance hai additional distance let's say this radius of this part it's what we call it as a transverse aberration matlab itna itna aberration zyada hua itna itna defect aa gaya That is what we call it as transverse aberration. Longitudinal में क्या होता है? ये screen का part है. यहाँ पे image form होना चाहिए था. Intersection यहाँ पे होना चाहिए था. But it is getting intersected over here. It's getting intersected over here as well. मतलब screen से इतना distance दूर जा रहा है वो. Ideally it should be on the screen, but it's not. It's getting this much distance, and it's forming at front of the screen as well. so this part is what we call it as a longitudinal spherical aberration clear a perfect image but we are getting a circular image so there will be one such circle which has the least diameter of all matlab assume karo ye ek circular image hua ye andar wala ek circular image hua ye bhi hai ye point नहीं है इट्स अ स्मॉल सर्कल विच इज गेटिंग फॉर्म सो वॉट इज सर्कल ऑफ लीस्ट कंफ्यूजन द सर्कल ऑफ लीस्ट कंफ्यूजन इज द सर्क्यूलर पार्ट विच हैज द स्मॉलेस्ट डायमीटर ओके मतलब अज्यूम करो ऑन द स्क्रीन अभी मैं टू डी में दिखा रहा हूं यहां पे ऐसा स्क्रीन है ओके इंस्टेड ऑफ गेटिंग अ पॉइंट तुम लोगों की ऐसा पॉइंट इमेज नहीं मिल रहा है due to aberration what we are getting we are getting circular images circular blurred images okay so as it is shown let's see ye ek aisa image mil raha hai okay uske andar dusra image aisa mil raha hai tum logo ko you are getting another image like this so this internal circle this is the one which i am currently drawing is the smallest circle which we have with the smallest diameter so this circle is called as circle of least confusion which has the smallest diameter amongst all the circular blurred images which are getting formed okay clear any